So we're on this 2018 Prius that has been in the body shop for a repair. We got a new condenser, new front cover. Everything here in the front is brand new. Uh, they also have one new line right here. This line was damaged up underneath here. So this line got replaced all the way back to the back firewall. So I got to check for a leak back there. You might think you're getting off easy sometimes when if you work in a mechanical shop and your body shop delivered a car to take to your shop to be recovered, you go, oh, all I have to do is leak check the two front fittings. Well, theoretically, you should check everything, but everybody likes to be lazy and they go, okay, I'm just going to check these, but they forgot and may not know that the body shop changed this line and they could have damaged the O-rings. And I can tell you one thing is they probably didn't change the O-rings when they took it off. They just took it off, stuck a new one on. Yes, this line comes with a new O-ring on it, but they disconnected this line too because they're both in the same plate. And I know they didn't change that. Um, another way I knew they changed that is because I mark my caps uh, all the time. And so when I left, both caps were marked with my name on them, L-E-C-H. And when I came back, this had a brand new cap. And then that made me look even closer. And But then I seen that this line, this is a new, fairly new clean car, but this line is completely clean with no dust on it, where this one has a dust residue from being older. Um, microns and vacuum and removing moisture. So a number means really nothing. You go, oh wow, he's down to 130 microns. That's really good, that's way below. That means absolutely nothing. Uh, just like an analog gauge, an analog gauge cannot even measure down this low. So you don't even know if you have a small leak, smaller than what an analog gauge could pick up or completely saturated with moisture. Have you removed the moisture yet? Well, you can do that when you're using a piece of software like this. You see all these little glitches like this? Those are all bubbles. So this, uh, I recovered this 22 days ago and unfortunately the lines weren't all covered and it was open to the atmosphere for the last 22 days. So that means this POE oil has extremely absorbed a lot of moisture and in this area of San Francisco, it's been foggy. This is the time of year where fog starts rolling in and on this part of San Francisco, it's like 99% humidity, 95%, 93% humidity every day, every night when the fog rolls in. So the moisture content in the air was extremely high and these little peaks you see is moisture bubbling and boiling out of the oil and out of the surface, the pores of the metal. And you can actually see that with your eyes and a good micro, uh, micrometer will actually read that and you can see that. And what will happen over a period of time is these little jumps that you see will start to disappear and they'll become smaller and smaller and the intervals between every little peak of boil out will become longer and longer till eventually after a period of time and that all depends on how much moisture contamination there is you'll see it almost flatline basically it'll just look like a dead person's heartbeat instead of somebody who's having a bad heart heart problem here um, so eventually you'll have a, a flat line and then you know you've re removed most of the moisture and that could be in a brand new system like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or an average system, an hour, two hours, or really highly moisture content system. It might take you 24 hours to get a flat line. And this you cannot read on a pair of analog gauges. You would never know it. And this you cannot use on a regular micron meter other than you can see the rise, but you can't actually see the outburst of like little micro explosions of steam coming out. And a good example is this. Have you ever seen a frying pan and you pour in fresh oil and you turn on the heat and the frying pan starts crackling and you see little bubbles form at the bottom of the frying pan and they explode and or they come up to the surface? That is moisture in the oil boiling out. The exact same thing is happening here. The moisture is boiling out of the oil exactly the same way, except at a lower temperature because we're under a vacuum instead of atmosphere. And in the oil on your frying pan, it's at atmospheric pressure 
but at a higher temperature. It's all relative to the temperature. So if you keep watching your pan of frying oil, as it bubbles and boils, you will notice more and more bubbles come out as the pressure gets, as the temperature gets higher for the relative, you know, sea level pressure or wherever you're at. Well, the same thing here. As you boil out more moisture out of the oil, the pressure can no longer go higher, it starts going lower. But as the pressure goes lower, it takes you into the next level where you can even remove more moisture. And then there comes a time where it flats lines. The same thing with your frying skillet pan that is filled with oil. You go to a certain temperature and then all of a sudden you start noticing it doesn't crackle so much more, the crackling sound. Now this doesn't include if you're overheating it. The crackling sound goes down and you start noticing the little bubbles that would form in the oil at the bottom of moisture start disappearing and they're no more. You have risen the temperature of the oil with whatever atmospheric temperature or pressure you are at to above the point where no more moisture could be removed from that oil because you've risen the temperature. We're doing the exact same thing. We have lowered the temperature at which the oil can boil out, the moisture can boil out because we're using a vacuum pump. So it boils at a much lower temperature and you're getting to witness this. And as I'm talking, you're starting to see these gaps start to become longer and it'll just progressively doing that. So I hope I explained this using some layman's terms and something people might be familiar with if they've ever cooked with cooking oil to something that you can relate with what happens in real life, everyday real life that is basically a mirror image of what's happening under a vacuum inside these lines that you can't see with the human eye and you cannot measure it with a set of analog gauges. You only can measure it with a micron gauge and it is really visual when you're watching it being graphed out right in front of you live. All right, I'll see you guys later.